It's the year 2017 and Resident Evil is back. Not only did Resident Evil 7 just come out, but also the final Resident Evil movie starring Mila Jovovich. Hell, it's even called Resident Evil The Final Chapter. The story of Alice will finally come to an end. Well, since it's the year of Resident Evil, I decided to go back and rewatch the previous five movies before I go see the final chapter. Yeah, I'm a sick, sick man, but just to let you know, I am a fan of the Resident Evil games. Well, 6 kind of sucked, but I did appreciate it. I never played Umbrella Corp. Never planned to. Anyway, I do love the series. Resident Evil was actually the first M-rated game I've ever played, so it's near and dear to me. So when I heard a live-action movie based on the games is coming out in 2002, I just had to see it. Sadly, I'd never seen it in theaters because I was too young to see a rated R movie by myself and my parents wouldn't take me because they hate zombie movies. So I waited and waited until I finally got it on DVD. Resident Evil is directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, the same guy responsible for the first Mortal Kombat movie and Event Horizon. To this day, I still think Mortal Kombat is the best live action adaptation of a video game, even though it's PG-13, and I did like Event Horizon. So at the time, I was okay that he directed Resident Evil. I was just happy that it was rated R. I did see trailers before I watched the movie, so I know that the movie isn't fully based off the first game. However, I thought that the movie would be more of a prequel because this is the origin of the zombie outbreak, and it would lead off to future movies that have the characters we know and love, like Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. So I thought of it more like Resident Evil Zero. Fine, Resident Evil before Zero. The movie starts off with narration. Beginning of the 21st century, the Umbrella Corporation had become the largest commercial entity in the United States. Nine out of every 10 homes contain its products. Was this really necessary? I mean, why was this narration here? Are you worried that the audience would be so stupid so you have to spell out Umbrella is evil? Is this narration for newcomers or for fans of the game? Fans of the game already know this, so this is just filler. If you just opened the movie with this shot, it would have been a better start. Instead, that narration just killed the mood. The majority of the movie takes place in an underground laboratory owned by Umbrella called The Hive. People not only work here, but they also live here, and it's miles below Raccoon City. So we see this unknown guy stealing both the T-Virus and the Antivirus, and he throws one of the T-Virus canisters to let the virus loose. It quickly spreads through the ventilation system just after the unknown guy makes his escape. So we collected it five Thank you! Disaster quickly follows as the AI of the Hive, known as the Red Queen, decides to kill everyone in the facility. If you watch this movie for the first time, the opening scene is pretty good. It's shot well, the music is pretty good. However, I have a bunch of problems with this scene. Like this part. This water isn't going anywhere! What? It's a sealed room! What do you mean the water isn't going anywhere? Do you mean to tell me there is no drainage system in case the sprinklers are active? I find that to be a huge design flaw. You can argue that in case of infection spreading, there can't be a drainage system, but what if there was a fire or something else that isn't as bad as the virus? How do you take the water out? Why is the Red Queen just fucking around with the elevator with these people? Why didn't she immediately make the elevator plummet just like the other elevator? Was the Red Queen sleeping when an unknown, unauthorized guy was stealing the T-virus and antivirus and breaking a T-virus canister so everyone would be infected? Why didn't it notice? That. You immediately shut down the facility right after you notice that the canister is broken, but you let the train outside still running? Who thought it would be a good idea for AI to take care of the place? What if the AI accidentally fucked things up? Why isn't anyone overseeing this in case if something goes terribly wrong? Oh my fucking god, Umbrella is so stupid. Ah! An eyeball! A very naked Mila Jovovic wakes up from her wet naked sleep. For someone who fell asleep while taking a shower, her makeup is amazing. Seriously, no smears, no nothing. Mila plays Alice, and she just happens to not remember anything. She got hit with nerf gas when she was in the shower, and that made her lose her memory. At first, this seems like a good mystery. She has no idea who she is, where she is. She even sees a drawer filled with weapons, and she has no idea why there are weapons there. She then puts on this sexy red dress, walks around, sees a wedding picture of her and James Purefoy, and I gotta say, the mansion looks awesome. It's creepy and reminds me a lot of the Spencer Mansion from Resident Evil 1. So at the time, I thought that the movie was going to take place in this mansion. Not really. It was just a small tribute to the game. Alice then gets grabbed by a guy named Matt. Touch me! And then some commandos bust in through the windows while the loud music is playing. So loud, I could barely hear some of the dialogue. What are you doing? I'm a cop breaking my arm! Rip 
McCoy. What about the cop? To tell you the truth, I do like the music in this movie. It's just that at times, it feels out of place or it's so loud that you could barely hear the dialogue. Who are these commandos? Are they the stars team from the game? McCoy. Nope! I want your report, soldier. Mission report. December 16, 1991. They're just a sanitation team hired by Umbrella to check out what happened in the hive. Yeah, kinda lame. And Michelle Rodriguez happens to be one of the commandos. I assume she will be one of the last survivors or one of the last to die because her name got second billing. Her name is Rain because it's edgy. So the sanitation team decide to bring the amnesiac Alice and possibly transfer cop Matt with them to infiltrate the hive. They onboarded a train and they discovered that Spence, played by James Purefoy, was hiding in one of the rooms. This triggered a flashback for Alice and she remembers that she's married to Spence and her wedding ring was encoded by Umbrella Corp. Jeez, that ring better be 24 karat gold, otherwise Alice got ripped off. Spence also lost his memory. What a coincidence! He can't possibly be the guy who started the infection in the beginning of the movie. That would be so predictable and stupid! The gang reached their destination and- Hold up. They pass by a room with a bunch of monitors. Um, if you're trying to get as much information as possible, why don't you check the security room that has access to the security cameras? Sure, they probably only show the cameras to the train area, but don't you wonder how and why Spence is on the train by himself in that locked room? These guys are fucking morons. Listen to me. I want to know who you people are, and I want to know what's going on here. Now. You and I have the same employer. We all work for the Umbrella Corporation. Oh, now we will get some information about this situation. I just love the fact that the leader willingly tells Alice, Spence, and Matt about what's going on, even though Alice and Spence have amnesia and they could be compromised, and Matt is not part of Umbrella. I'm sorry, why does the mansion and train hit both Alice and Spence with nerve gas? What's the fucking point of that? They are security guards for Umbrella, guarding the only access point to the hive. And you hit them with nerve gas that makes them lose their memory for a few hours? If they are a liability, then why aren't they dead? I don't understand this. I'm afraid things are a little more complicated than that. Also, thanks for the schematic. It's really necessary for the audience, I mean Alice, that we get caught up to speed. That she gets caught up to speed. And apparently there's a time limit because you see on the bottom right of the amazing early 2000s schematic presentation that the team has about 2 hours and 35 minutes to finish the mission. Did Alice Spence and Matt question this during the presentation? Of course fucking not. The team breached the hive and soon spooky shit starts happening. Like this drowned dead woman sneaking up to Matt. Jesus. And of course, like true horror movie fashion, right after the team leaves... Okay, why? Why did the zombie do that? Are you sure it's a zombie and not just some amazing stunt swimmer directed by Paul W.S. Anderson to do that? Oh goody, we see another schematic presentation. Seriously though, who's watching this now? It can't be the team, so it has to be the Red Queen. But why would the Red Queen need to see this? She should know where they are every second. Was she buffering? Is this a loading screen for her? I have no clue! <laughs> Captain. Dining Hall B. That's what it says on the map. Maybe the corporation's keeping a few secrets down here. Something you're not supposed to see. So, do the Umbrella employees know this? If they don't, then what the fuck do they do here? No, seriously. In the beginning of the movie, it said that unknown to its own employees, Umbrella worked on genetic experimentation and viral weaponry. Who built this stuff then? Who did Umbrella hire to make this creepy room in the first place? I'm pretty sure every single Umbrella employee is evil. Resident Evil. Alice then stumbles upon to this chamber, and I was excited at first because I thought it would be Tyrant from the first game. <laughs> then we get a jump scare from the only black guy in the movie. I said, keep it tight. What a dick. To be honest though, I like this character. Heck, I like this actor. Colin Salmon is awesome, and I really hope that he survives in this movie. I mean, he's the only black guy and the leader of this team. There's no possible way that he's gonna die. 
right? And yay, more animated schematics. And Alice looks pretty... busty. Um, exaggerated features much? Listen, I admit, I'm a perv. But isn't it wrong that a schematic version of Alice had bigger breasts than Mila Jovovic? Someone made a character model like that. Someone spent many hours back in the early 2000s to make this. Kinda shameful. Again, you can argue that it's just a basic computer model for an average-sized woman, but like Colin said earlier, Our position on the map is indicated by heat signature. So yeah, it's shameful. Mila Jovovic is beautiful. Her body is beautiful. That's why I often pause that scenes where she's naked. So the team finally break into the Red Queen's chambers and we get one of the most hated things about the Resident Evil series, the laser hallway. At first, this was an awesome scene. Back then, no movie has a scene like this. Move up. What's that? Shut up. Shit. This movie had the balls to kill off the majority of a commandos team in an instant. Usually in movies, the team members get killed off one by one. This movie? Fuck it. I'll kill four members including your leader. Take that. But let's look at this critically. First, why didn't the leader go inside of the room when he had the chance? Now, you can argue he does care about the team, but if your mission is to head into the Red Queen's chambers no matter what the cost, then he failed. Also, there could have been a way where he could have shut off the laser grid once he's in the main room. This whole thing could have been prevented if he went inside the room by himself and not tell anyone to move up. Second, look at the layout of this hallway. At the ends of the hallway, there is a gap where the lights stop. All these guys have to do is back the fuck up as much as possible at both ends of this hallway and they're fine. Third, again, the layout. There are metal intersections on the walls, ceilings, and floors, but the hot lasers go through them, but they don't damage the intersections. Hell, when the lasers become a grid, how are the floor and ceiling able to make the grid when there's a middle section that doesn't have the lights to make the lasers? Fourth, these commandos are fucking morons. Why was the medic surprised and the last to know about the death laser coming towards them? She was already looking at it, but in the next shot, it looked like she turned her head quickly. Turbo continuity. Also, why did it cut her neck at an angle? It should have cut her neck clean and the top part of the uniform. And apparently, one guy died from shock because his fingers got cut off. And also, this prop was poorly made. I don't know anyone's pinky that's located at the same level as a thumb. And last of all, if you could make a fucking laser grid, then why didn't you do this in the fucking first place? You could have killed all of them in an instant! So Alice and the hacker guy Kaplan decide to finish the job to avenge their fallen comrades. They set up this giant EMP device on top of the Red Queen's console, and then we see the hologram image of the Red Queen herself. Which is a British girl. Get out, you can't be in here. Who can talk. Yes, she's a holographic representation of the Red Queen. You have to get out. Modeled after the head programmer's daughter. Okay, this is what killed the Resident Evil film series for me. The Red Queen. In this movie, her job is to maintain the infection. She doesn't want the infection to escape. So she felt like she had no choice but to kill everyone in the hive. Okay. Why didn't you send a message to Umbrella about what happened so they would know not to bring an EMP device to disable you? Why didn't you try to contact the sanitation team before you killed them with the laser hallway? Again, why did you use nerf gas on Alice and Spence if they are the guards of the only access point to the hive? Out of all fucking people, I'm pretty sure your fucking security guards should fucking know this shit. Also, I don't know how long it took Alice and Kaplan to set up the EMP device, but I'm pretty sure you had enough time to tell them what the hell is going on. Instead, you have to be incredibly vague and say, You're all going to die down here because it's a great line for the trailer. Also, I don't understand the mission objective of this team. You have no idea what the fuck happened. So instead of being careful and gather intel, you decide to disable the AI of the whole facility which could accidentally bring chaos? This team is filled with morons! So the Red Queen is disabled and all the doors are open which unleashes the zombified employees. Finally, we get zombies in a Resident Evil movie. And it only took about 37 minutes. And no, I'm not counting the drowned jump scare zombie.
Isn't it sad that four members of this badass Commandos team died because of lasers instead of zombies in a Resident Evil movie? It occurred to me that the Red Queen's chambers were at the bottom level and the team just so happens to not come across any room that has the dead employees. Also, didn't anyone think what would happen if you disabled the Red Queen? What's the next step? Did they know that all the doors would be unlocked including the ones that are holding the unstable specimens in these chambers? These sanitation workers are terrible at their job. Rain heard some noise and decided to check it out herself. I'm on it. She sees what she assumed is a survivor and tries to help. It's okay, we're here to help. But she immediately gets her hand bit. Stay down. I'm warning you, stay down! Rain and JD immediately shoot up the zombie and Rain wasted a lot of bullets from her submachine gun. <laughs> That's just overkill. She doesn't know that the thing is a zombie, yet she decides to unload a clip on her? Bitch isn't standing now. And get a load of this. Within seconds, the whole team is back together and it turned out that the zombie actually escaped without them noticing even though it was right in front of them. She's gone. It's bullshit. She fell right here, but she's gone. Who is this zombie, Batman? What the fuck are you talking about? Wait. Wyatt. Finally, some zombie action. Oh, this better be good. We have one zombie carrying an axe, some zombies with incredibly dated CGI zombie faces. Oh, I hope the action is good. Where? Oh come on! How did this zombie manage to sneak up on Rain? Damn, this team is filled with morons. No, seriously, they keep shooting at the zombies' chest and stomachs. Not one of them actually aimed for the heads. Hell, they're such poor shots, they shot off the chambers, which caused an explosion. <laughs> These are the best umbrella can send down? Fuck! If John Wick or Galahad from Kingsman were here, every single one of these motherfuckers would be dead while some badass music plays in the background. Headshots all around! Hell, I would go with Jesse Eisenberg from Zombieland over these stupid idiots. At least he knows how to double tap. So the team gets separated, JD dies, Rain gets bitten again, Kaplan realizes he's a dumbass, but at the same time, everyone's a dumbass in this team. Spence did absolutely nothing through all this. Hmm, he can't be the one that started all this. And unsurprisingly, the chamber that Alice looked through earlier broke open. And it's not the tyrant, it's the liquor. I'm kind of disappointed. Don't get me wrong, the liquors were terrifying in Resident Evil 2. However, the CGI... Oh boy, this did not age well. Well, it's a step up from Reptile. We get back to Alice, who does some actual exploring. I admit, whenever Alice has to explore the hive by herself, the movie does feel a lot like the Resident Evil games. Sure, there's no puzzles like the crests or certain keys, but it actually gets the atmosphere of the Resident Evil games right. You're alone, helpless, weaponless, and lost in this creepy environment where the next danger could be right around the corner. Unfortunately, Alice doesn't look terrified at all. You hear heavy breathing from her, but she looks fine. She looks more confused than terrified. Look at her reaction to the zombie dog. That doesn't look like someone who's shitting her pants at the sight of a zombie dog. This is the look of someone who's shitting their pants at the sight of a zombie dog. I'm Asian. My eyes shouldn't open this wide. The makeup of the zombie dog is awesome. Poor pup. I wonder how long it took to get this goop on the dog and how long it took to clean it off. Seriously, the dogs used as the zombie dogs in these movies deserve awards. Alice then runs away from the dog and immediately gets encountered by a zombie guard. <laughs> Thank you.
No. Just no. Alice remembers that she knows Kung Fu. This is what I always wanted from a Resident Evil movie. Kung Fu. I'm sorry, I'd rather take Chris Redfield punching a giant rock over Kung Fu. Oh, hold on, wait a second. Let's rewind this and play it slowly. Oh my god, are you kidding me? They left this in here? Ugh. Alice then shows off her amazing shooting skills and this wicked off-the-wall kick to the head. Okay, is she fucking Trinity? Seriously now, we're copying the Matrix. Hell, she even has a leather coat on and there is slow-mo. Well, at least she's not wearing sunglasses. Why does the Kung Fu bother me so much? Because there's no tension after this. Alice could kill everyone with Kung Fu. It ruined the atmosphere that made the game so great. Also, it just happened to be great timing for her to remember that she knows Kung Fu when she really needed it. Matt does some exploring as well. He had a nice, lovely reunion with his sister Lisa. Aw, she just wanted to eat your face. My question is, why does Lisa look normal compared to all the dead people? Sure, her skin looks a bit pale, but not to the point where I immediately think that something's wrong with her. Her skin looks fine, her suit doesn't look ripped, her hair looks fine, her makeup looks fine. No blood dripping from her mouth, she isn't drooling, she didn't make any zombie noises until she reached Matt. She only looks like that so she can surprise the audience when it turns out she's a zombie. But we know she's a zombie. We see her die in the beginning of the movie. Anyway, Lisa finally dies when Alice hits her with the all spark or the tesseract. Seriously, why is there a glass cube? Turns out Lisa and Matt were environmentalists trying to expose the truth about Umbrella. Alice remembers Lisa via flashbacks and it turns out that Alice gave Lisa access to the hive. If your friends had been a little more thorough, they would have seen right through my false ID and all the red flags would have gone off Quantico. NSA, ICAP, all the rest. There's no way I could have infiltrated the hive. Yep, movie, you're giving us more proof that the team is filled with morons. Oh, shocking! Umbrella's working on illegal research. God fucking damn it, are we still on this? You've seen the zombies. You've seen the chambers with creepy experiments. What more proof do you need? Oh, Alice is shocked that Umbrella worked on genetic and viral experiments? Fuck this movie. Yay, more anime schematics. Seriously, Direct Queen is disabled, so she's not watching it. I highly doubt that Kaplan and the others were watching it on the screen because they were surprised when Alice and Matt bust into the room. Paul W.S. Anderson is just having fun because he found a toy and loves showing it off. Also, Kaplan and Rain left that door unlocked? What for? They didn't know if the others made it out? God, this is dumb. So fucking dumb. In that way? It's a dead end. There's no way out of the Queen's chamber. So we wait. Someone doesn't hear from you, they'll send backup or something. Right? What? What's wrong? We don't have much time. Oh, now you let them know why there's a time limit. They seal shut in just under an hour. If we're not out of here by then, we're not getting out. Containing the incident is the only fail-safe plan they had against possible contamination. And you're only telling us this now, when we're trapped half a fucking mile underground? Actually, I'm surprised Spence didn't ask this question way fucking earlier like a normal human being would. Hell, in a lot of movies, someone asks if help is coming the moment they're in deep shit. This movie has about 20 minutes left, and now someone asks about this. Jesus fucking Christ. Then Alice does the most logical thing in this movie. Turn the Red Queen back on. Where are you taking those? I'm turning her back on. Well, that is not a good idea. She'll know a way out of here. That homicidal bitch killed my team. That homicidal bitch may be our only way out of here. I like the fact that they called the Red Queen a homicidal bitch when they brought all of this upon themselves. And why is Alice pressing these buttons? Does she actually know what these buttons do? I'm pretty sure Kaplan will be insulted if Alice knows how to turn the Red Queen back on. <laughs> The initial charge must have damaged your boards. In other words, we ran out the budget for the hologram and this is the same year where Spider-Man and Lord of the Rings The Two Towers came out. We didn't want to embarrass anyone with our CGI. Ah, there you are. 
Things I gather have gone out of control. Give me that fucking switch right now. I'm gonna fry your ass. Okay, why does Rainy immediately want to destroy the Red Queen? I thought she wanted to get the hell out of here and also know what the fuck is going on. Jesus, I don't care that she'll end up a zombie. She's fucking annoying and stupid. What about the T-Virus? But quite simply, it reanimates the body. It brings the dead back to life. Why is everyone shocked that the T-Virus made the zombies... Well, zombies? They are driven by the basest of impulses, the most basic of needs. Which is? The need to feed. Holy shit, zombies feed on people! Also, I love that the Red Queen tells them that in order to kill zombies, they have to shoot them in the head or snap their spinal cord. Something that the team hasn't done at all. Hell, Alice didn't even know that until this moment, but she killed zombie dogs and a security guard by shooting them in the heads and snapping their necks. Again, this team is filled with MORONS! Anyway, Alice made a deal with the Red Queen, and it turns out that there is a way out of the chambers. What did you say before, Kaplan? It's a dead end. There's no way out of the Queen's chamber. Dumbass. They weren't fucking thorough. Hell, I don't think they needed the Red Queen's help if they actually fucking looked around. What the hell is this place? The utility tunnels. They run underneath the hive for water, gas, and power lines. Oh, so Kaplan does know about the utility tunnels. My god, man, you suck at your job. Uh. <sighs> Does Spence actually contribute anything? Going around in circles! All this is the route the computer gave us. Through the utility. I don't know listening to her. Enough already! We have no choice but to keep moving, because those things are right behind us. You got that? Oh, he gets grabbed. Very helpful to the team. Yeah, Rain is to blame. She did push him against the grate. And, oh, come on, how did these zombies sneak up on them? Did the team really not notice them ahead? It's not like they're behind a corner in the dark. It's a narrow hallway with lights. And yay, more Alice kicking butt because everyone else is so damn helpless. Now, every time Alice performs a move, it's in slow-mo. The team then climb on the pipes. Kaplan gets bit, and Rain stupidly gets herself bit many more times. I'm just shocked on how zombie JD managed to get down here so fast. Of course, out of all zombies to bite Rain, it was JD who managed to bite her in the neck. She was right. We're all gonna die down here. No. We're getting out. All of us. Um, Alice, you shouldn't make promises. Just don't, sweetie, just don't. The team then finds a way out. They were climbing on the pipes, but it couldn't hold, and Kaplan is separated from the group. I'm not going anywhere. Unfortunately, it looks like there's no way out for Kaplan. Go! So, he's going to shoot himself. But he decides to use his final bullet on a zombie instead of himself. Apparently there was a way out and it's to the right of him. What a dumbass. Alice, Rain, Matt, and Spence stumble upon the laboratories and Alice just happens to remember that there is an antivirus. I think you'll find it. How convenient! Spence then gets all his memories back. I can help you get the virus. Even more convenient! It turned out that Spence caused the whole incident in the first place. <gasps> I am fucking shocked. There was no way it could have been him. This is worthy of an M. Night Shyamalan plot twist. Fuck this movie. Turns out that Spence was listening to the conversations between Lisa and Alice and decides to steal the T-virus and antivirus for himself. And hold up, that is the wrong note. Oh come on, how do you fuck up a note? It's a note, this is pure stupidity. And how was he able to access the labs without anyone knowing, not even the Red Queen? Thank you! Oh my god, they fucked up the continuity again. This is from the beginning of the movie. Times. All radiation badges will be collected at 5 p.m. Thank you! And this is now. Thank 
you. Spence should have gone down the same hallway as the guy who spilled his coffee if he's making his getaway like this. It looked like Spence came out of the elevator from the left, bumped the guy, and made his way to the right. But in the flashback, he came down the hallway where the spilled coffee guy came from, but the spilled coffee guy is nowhere to be seen, and we have this random woman who didn't pass the spilled coffee guy in the beginning. Hell, we see these two people in gray suits coming down the hallway behind the spilled coffee guy. They weren't there in the flashback. My god, how do you fuck up your own continuity? Did none of the fucking editors see this shit? Anyway, Spence is evil. Oh wow, I'm shocked. In or out? I don't know what we had, but it's over. He does get bitten by a zombie and was going to leave Alice, Matt, and Rain to die, but the Red Queen's been a bad, bad girl. Turns out Spence hid the virus and antivirus in the back of the train? It's out in the open! It's not like he hid it under the train, it's right outside! My god, this team is filled with morons! They really are not thorough. The point of the Resident Evil games is to search every single nook and cranny, every single corner, so you can get the fuck out. These commandos suck at their jobs. They waste ammo, don't gather intel, and don't search for items or ways out of the situation. This whole thing could have been prevented if they acted smart, and one of the smartest things to do would be to go into the security room and check previous footage to see what's going on, and they would have fucking noticed that Spence caused the whole thing, and he put the case filled with the virus and the anti virus in the back of the train. Let's get this movie over with. My head hurts. So the Red Queen led the liquor to Spence and the liquor made short work of it. Oh my god. The Red Queen promises that Alice and Matt can get out if they kill Rain. The Red Queen did say that Rain's infection has progressed so much that the antivirus won't be able to cure her. But of course, everyone's a moron and Kaplan decides to fry the Red Queen and the four then escape on the train. Not before Alice wastes time by talking to the zombified Spence and then killing him. I'm missing you already. <laughs> You guys are on a tight schedule, so stop wasting everyone's fucking time! So Rain and Kaplan are given the antivirus, Alice promises one more time. Hey, no one else is gonna die. Seriously Alice, stop making promises. And we finally get the final boss fight. Yes, a giant liquor in a narrow train car. This is going to be awesome. Kaplan immediately dies. Yeah, thanks for wasting an antivirus on you, asshole. I'm not going to lie, I do like the design of the liquor. Sure, the CGI is really dated, but when it shows the practical model, it looks pretty cool. I do like that Alice and Matt are helping each other defeat the liquor, and Matt's actually being useful for once by shoving these pipes. And I don't know why there are pipes there, but the movie's about to end, so I don't want to question it. Turns out Rain became a zombie after all. Yeah, thanks for wasting an antivirus on you, bitch. See, Alice? This is what happens when you make promises. People die and turn to mulch or cannibals. Rain gets shot in the head, which presses a button, which opens the bottom doors, which kills the liquor. Okay, during the scuffle with Rain, the liquor did nothing. No, seriously, nothing. It's like it can't function without its tongue, so it didn't even try to claw at Alice. Advance Hunter my ass! Also, Alice wastes time by just looking at Rain and feeling sad. Instead of giving Matt a fucking antivirus, did you forget that even scratches can spread the infection? She must have totally forgot because they finally made out of the exit and Matt still didn't get shot with the antivirus. Matt is about to transform and Alice makes another promise. You're infected. But you'll be okay. I'm not losing you. Do you ever learn, bitch? Did she give him the antivirus? Of course not! People in lab coats stopped her and they took Matt away. He's mutating. I want him in the Nemesis program. Holy shit! 
What? I want him in the Nemesis program. Dude, I can't wait for the next movie. No, seriously, when I first watched the scene, I was fucking excited. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis was my most favorite Resident Evil game for a long time. And Nemesis is a great villain. He was terrifying. He gave me nightmares. Even though this movie does suck, this scene right here made up most of my problems. Nemesis didn't really have much of a backstory in the game. So seeing a normal guy who was trying to expose Umbrella ends up becoming a killer monster who works for Umbrella is an awesome idea. I want her quarantined. Close observation, and a full series of blood tests. Let's see if she's infected. Take her to the Raccoon City facility, then assemble the team. We're reopening the hive. Some time passed and, oh hi Jason Isaacs. Will we see you again in a future Resident Evil movie? Nope. Ha, ah, an eyeball. And Alice is kinda naked again. Hell, you can see her vagina. Take that Sharon Stone from Basic Instinct. To be honest though, this is a great ending. It actually feels like Resident Evil. We have Alice out in the open with a shotgun in hand, ready to take on the zombie apocalypse. The camera zooms out showing the aftermath of the zombie attack, shows off transportation that has Raccoon City all over it. This is great. I felt like more effort is put at the end of the movie than the rest of it. I don't get it. I don't get it, Paul. This movie could have been amazing. The ending of the movie actually made it feel like the Resident Evil games. You yourself, said you're a fan of the games, yet you strayed away from what makes the games Resident Evil. Instead, you made a sci-fi kung fu action movie with zombies that just happened to take place in Raccoon City. Fucking asshole. And fuck Capcom. Or fuck George R. Romero, I don't know. There are conflictive reports about Romero's version of a Resident Evil movie. Either it was very bad compared to Paul W.S. Anderson's script, or it was too faithful to the games and Capcom doesn't like that. I don't know. I honestly wished Romero did a Resident Evil movie because he is the grandfather of zombie movies. Hell, he inspired Resident Evil. And if his script was very faithful to the games, then I would have been all for it. I heard Romero never played the game, but he did have his assistant play so he would learn from the gameplay footage. Paul W.S. Anderson actually played the games. And he came up with this. But like I said, I was really excited for the next Resident Evil movie because of the ending to this. Oh my god, yes, we have Nemesis in the next movie. There's no possible way that the movie could be bad, right? Right? Resident Evil.